education resources. Okay, so we've just started with the recording. Uh, so a little bit about myself. My name is Monica Shah, and I am a Digital Transformation Associate in the Research and Foresight team at eCampus Ontario, uh, where I work primarily on running one of the micro-credential program that we created this year, which is called the Leadership for Digital Transformation. Uh, I have been working in the digital learning space for close to uh, 15 years. And, you know, when I say that, I find it very interesting because it takes me back to the time when uh, digital learning was all about WBTs and ILTs, which is like web-based training and ILTs. And today uh, we talk about things like blended, hybrid, and high flex. And I think it's such an amazing time. Um, okay. And also a fun fact about me. Well, that's my pet sparkle. Uh, she is not the co-presenter, but what I just wanted to share is that uh, I am a mother of a teenager and I'm also a pet parent. And when we got her, my daughter insisted that she also has our surname. So she's not sparkle. She is sparkle. Sure. So that's the little fun fact about uh, me and my life and my personal life. Uh, I would also like to add that I have my manager, Laura Vaselli, and other team members from eCampus Ontario joining us today to ensure the smooth running of the session. And it gives me great pleasure. Honestly, it gives me great pleasure to be moderating today's webinar and to be introducing our presenters for today. Um, so our presenters for today, uh, the, the first one that we have today is Laura Luopa. Laura is a librarian in the Open Library at eCampus Ontario. She is supporting the Specialized Open Education Resources and Ancillary Resources Project, which aims to have resources developed in a variety of areas uh, like business, engineering, uh, skilled traders, and science. Uh, she is passionate about lifelong learning and digital transformation. Uh, she's accompanied by her colleague, Leo Heck. Leo is also a librarian at eCampus Ontario's Open Library, where he is responsible for the Open Education Resources Rangers program. And I'm, I, and I'm sure that Leo will be talking a little bit more in detail as we progress into the presentation about this program. His areas of interest encompass using OER, the Open Education Resources, to enrich the experience of both learners and educators reducing financial barriers to education, which I feel is so, so important, and raising awareness about emerging technologies in the educational land, uh, landscape. Uh, we are so happy to have you both with us here today. Uh, just before we jump into the main presentation, I just want to take a few minutes for anybody in the presentation today who is new to eCampus Ontario. eCampus Ontario is a provincially funded non-profit organization that leads a consortium of provinces, publicly funded colleges, universities, and indigenous institutes to advance the use of education technology and digital learning environments. Uh, our membership includes 53 institutions in this province, and our members are faculty, administrators, student support services, registrars, office teaching, le assistants, learners, and more. And we welcome anyone involved in post-secondary education in Ontario to come find what is the right opportunity. Come and talk to us. We will be sharing a lot of links on the ways that you can connect with us. Uh, just another few minutes, and I promise, then we'll just move to the main presentation. Uh, we are here today uh, talking about digital transformation. This is a community of practice for digital transformation. So I just want to take a few minutes to say how we at eCampus are supporting digital uh, transformation. This DX is something that we call digital transformation. So we all know that higher education is in the era of digital transformation, where institutions are actually redefining like how we teach and learn. Uh, digital transformation or DX is simply more than just, you know, you just introduce a new digital technology is that, uh, or, you know, digital transformation. No, it's beyond that. What we are actually looking at is that, yes, that digital tool is an enabler. It, this, these tools, uh, you, we want to introduce them into the complex education system. And why do we want to do that? So that we can transform an institution's operations, strategic directions, and value proposition. 
Uh, we at eCampus Ontario are committed to fostering digital transformation in the province's higher education sector by providing digital by design platforms, programs, services uh, that are responsive to shifts and opportunities in the educational and employment landscape. Uh, one of the programs I just mentioned was the, is the leadership for DX micro credential, but there are many other ways that we are supporting digital transformation. Uh, that said, we understand that DX is not a straightforward journey. It's complex, and there are challenges, and we need to discuss those challenges. We need to have a platform where we can get together and also discuss what are the challenges that we face. And that one of that, the objective of this DX community is to have a platform where we can have meaningful, engaging conversations around digital transformation in higher education. So for the remainder of today's webinar, we will hear from Laura and Leo, who will take us through the amazing work done by eCampus Ontario's uh, open library team and how it can be a great enabler for digital transformation. So over to you, Laura and Leo. And with that, I will stop sharing my screen. Just give me a sec. Right. Thank you very much, Monica, for the introduction. And hi, everyone. Let me share my screen here. I hope it's working well and everyone can see it. All right. So uh, we're really excited to be here now talking to you today about the Open Library and the wonderful world of open educational resources, as Monica just uh, mentioned. And so here at the Open Library, we strive to advance equity and digital transformation in Ontario by promoting and providing access to OER. And we'll show a little bit to you today. So today we'll start giving you some general information about the Open Library. Then we'll move into open educational resources, the what, the how, and the why. Uh, then we'll have a little activity on Miro. After that, Laura will demonstrate the impact of OER for students, learners, and institutions, then highlight the major initiatives being developed at eCampus Ontario's Open Library. These are programs which work on raising awareness to OER with the OER Rangers, creating OER in fields where we saw the greatest needs with the specialized open uh, educational resources, and finally, evaluating and improving the OERs with the integrating OER program. But before we go into all that, we'd like to know more about you. Monica, can you put the poll up, please? We'd sure. like to know first, what's Absolutely. your level of knowledge of open educational resources? Sure, so there are two polls. Uh, there are two questions over here. And if you could just start answering, the first is what is your level of knowledge of open education resources? And the second one just follows it. Have you created or used OERs? Right. Just give it a moment and then I can just end the poll. We can see the result. Or, uh, yeah, Leo, if you want to talk about this. Yeah, the result yeah, of more. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to mention about the, the poll in general that, that we want to know your level of knowledge. Uh, about OER so that we can understand a little better what we're uh, looking at here. And I can see that there's a lot of people who have some knowledge here. And I, I even uh, actually know some some people here are OER Rangers as well. So I'm glad to see you here. And also if you have created or use it, used any OERs um, and we have most people saying no, which is which is great because then it's an opportunity for you to know a little bit more about OER and perhaps adopt them to your uh, teaching or inside your institution. I'll just share the results quickly here. All right, so let's move on. Thank you so much for responding there. Oh, sorry. A little problem here. Uh, we're all good. So here, uh, beyond the open library, uh, eCampus Ontario's key programs 
include uh, some great programs such as the micro-credential portal. We also have the Ontario Extends, where many great learning programs uh, for educators are available. And um, also we have uh, Le Consortium d'Apprentissage Experiencial Francophone de l'Ontario, CAPFO. I'm sorry for butchering the French here. Uh, and this uh, CAPFO is in support of Francophone student experiential learning. Uh, also, we just had the annual technology and education seminar and showcase tests, which happened a couple of weeks ago. And I hope some of you were able to go there and enjoy it. And we also have so much more. Uh, so we invite you to just visit ecampusontario.ca to explore our other digital transformation programs, platforms, and services further. So for the Open Library, so the Open Library is both my home and Laura's, uh, but it's also, and mo most importantly, the home of OER in Ontario. In fact, it's the largest digital library of OER in Canada, where we have over 1,500 resources and more than 6,000 H5P activities, as well as links to courses, programs, and much more. So you can go to openlibrary.ecampusontario.ca to uh, check all the work we've been doing and see a little of the amazing OERs that we have available for everyone there. So we've been talking about OER, but what are OER anyway? And it's it's great to see that some of you are knowledgeable of OER, and but we also have the opportunity to let people know a, a bit more about it. So um, we're going we're going to start with this um, definition, which is one of the most common definitions that we have for OER. Uh, which goes like this: Open educational resources are learning, teaching, and research materials in any format and medium that reside in the public domain or are under copyright that have been released under an open license that permit no cost access, reuse, repurpose, adaptation, and redistribution by others. It's a lengthy des description, but we're going to go through each point as we move along. And this is from UNESCO, and UNESCO has a page dedicated to OER. If you can have a look, because they have many uh, great resources there, including recommendations and goals. So David Wiley is one of the most cited people when speaking of OER, and all, he also says that an OER should allow you to engage with the five R activities. And this is a, a very, uh, it's a very good way for you to understand what's the, the process of open education resources. And these five R activities are retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute. But we're gonna go through each one of the Rs. The first one is pretty straightforward. It's retain. This means that you can make, own, or control a copy of the resource. So if you decide you want to download a public domain book, you're welcome to add that to your collection of PDF, for instance. The next is revise. So let's say this book is in French. You'd like to practice your translation skills. You can, for instance, translate your copy of that resource. Then we go to remix. Let's say that chapter three of that same book that you just translated works really well to highlight a concept in chapter 12 of another open textbook. So you can make a mashup. Your personal collection can now include an item that is a combination of these two books. So the fourth R, uh, you can then reuse that resource. You can use that new packet you just created to teach a class or on your website, or use it as a learning object in your class. And now let's say your new uh, item, this mashup, has become super popular in your faculty or in your field, and many pe people are interested in having a copy. You can, should you choose to do so, share the copy of that resource. So this is the 5R, redistributes. So retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute. But here's the thing, although we often use the term book and I've been using since the beginning of this presentation, 
uh, when we're talking about OER, that's not all OER is. Uh, we've got far more than that in the open library with a list of media and file types that continues to expand and grow. Uh, so from simulation to assessments to common, I apologize, uh, there you go. So, um, so we have many different uh, media type and files and things that can be OER. And we have simulations. You can have a VR experience, for instance. It could be uh, simply a podcast or it could be a full course that you packaged into a common cartridge. So this is just to let you know that an OER is not just a book. There's much more to an OER than just a format. But so what makes an OER? And here we have three main important points. We have access, purpose, and users. So for access, we have uh, works that are in public domain or copyrighted work that has a license allowing broad users at no cost. And one of these licenses, the, the one that is used most often is the Creative Commons licenses. And I believe my colleague is posting in the chat um, a link to a, a summary of the Creative Commons. Um, and then we have purpose, and this is intended for learning, teaching, or research. And it's right there in the name, Open Educational Resources. It should be intended for, for these purposes. And finally, we have users, um, no restriction on type of users. However, uh, as I say that, you can see that there's an asterisk there next to no restriction. And uh, it is because there are some resources which we call OER that might be under a license that perhaps could restrict the type of users. One of them is the Ontario Commons license, which were which are resources created through the virtual learning strategies funding. And it can be accessed by Ontario publicly funded post-secondary educators, learners, and staff. And also we have traditional knowledge labels, which apply to indigenous knowledge. And one of the labels is TKCO, and it is used for material which is not to be circulated beyond the family, clan, or community. And you can see a link to local context on the chat as well, where you can learn a little bit more about the traditional knowledge labels. But why exactly should we move towards uh, open educational resources and, and, and move away from the status quo that we have? So one of the first reasons, and this is something that I want to stress, is that you retain legal control. You don't lose copyright or legal rights over the item. It's still fully yours, even if it's licensed as an open educational resource. It also opens up avenues for collaboration uh, so you and your potential collaborators can innovate in the ways you instruct and educate. You can even engage students in the content development, and you may know that student authorship leads to greater levels of engagement. It's also a great way to create opportunities for equity, diversity, and inclusion. You step away a bit from the traditional modes of distribution and you find a much more equitable and inclusive landscape in both the creation of and engagement with open educational resources. And finally, we have service. Uh, education systems should share learning that's happening at their schools with the final aim of benefiting their community, which, is, which isn't limited to a single organization. And education that is customized and accessible creates a base that we can all use to attain even greater heights in, in uh, sorry, <clears throat> even great heights and innovation. So here we have even more advantages uh, for educators and learners. And let me quickly summarize them. Um, for educators, we, we one of the, the first things that we notice is that it's easy access to the resources on the internet in places such as the Open Library or even within your institution's catalog. 
the public domain and open license resources allow customization without the hassle of dealing with copyright owners and this saves you time and sometimes money as well uh, and again it's free and often has high quality and it's created by educators and it's often validated through the uh, the process of peer review as well by other educators and this is something that we're going to uh, talk a little bit about when we discuss the integrating OER program. Uh, so now for learners, we're going mostly in the same direction. We also have easy access online in places such as the Open Library. Being open facilitates the research and reutilization of these resources in things such as assignments, and it's free, which is great, so that they can pay the tuition and still buy food afterwards, which is great. But so let's move on to a mirror board now. My colleague will post a um, link to the mirror board where we're going to have a few questions and we ask you to um, provide some answers. Um, and it's not it's not going to be graded or anything. Just say whatever comes to your mind. It, we really want to know your perspective on this issue. Um, and even if you have any trouble with Miro, you can uh, just go to the chat here. We're going to post all the questions there. So let me move that way. OK. Now here we are. So if you don't know how to use uh, Miro, we have a few basic instructions there, but it's basically just going to one of the sticky notes here and you can start writing whatever you uh, feel like it's the best way to, to answer this question. So we're gonna give you a couple of minutes for each question. So go ahead. And if you have any questions, please post in the chat. And you can also just follow in the chat the questions and post your answers there. Also feel free if you finish the first question to move along to the other ones. So, and if you have more than one answer that you want to share, please feel free to uh, write many stick and sticky notes as well. There's some very great um, answers so far. And then they emphasize the idea of openness and sharing and uh, decreased costs being free for all. Uh, so that's that's great. We can move on to the second question. We already have some answers here, which is great.
I think we can move on to the third question. I think Laura already posted in the chat as well. Thanks, Laura. I'm just gonna add another minute here, and I think we, we should be able to wrap this uh, activity. And again, uh, on the second question about benefits, uh, it's also emphasized uh, a great um, the the access and the low cost or uh, being free. Great answers there. Uh, Leo, there's, there's a question by Pascal. He says he's a little confused. I'm wondering mm. if he's confused about the questions. Okay. If you if you want to, um, are you confused about the questions or is it more about the platform itself? It can be a lot, especially with all these uh, courses moving around. It can yeah, be I'm. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, yeah, no. So it's just we have these questions that we want you to, if if you want choose to do so, to uh, just reply them on the sticky notes there, or you can also reply on the chat. And uh, again, you're free to to not uh, participate as well, if you prefer to not to do so. And you can also I, go back there whenever you want uh, with the link that we provided. Okay. I think I'll just watch for now. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Pascal. All right. Okay. So let's move back to the presentation here. Thank you so much for all the answers. And now I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Laura Luapa who will talk about the impact of OER and the Open Library's major initiatives. Hey, thanks you for leading that activity and uh, everyone for the great responses. It looks like there was a lot of uh, great engagement on the board. So moving back to our presentation, we wanted to focus on the impact of OER. And I wanted to point out the financial benefits of OER. We know the burden of purchasing textbooks and other learning materials and how that can impact learners and educators, and OER can help tremendously with that. So far, we've helped over 200,000 learners save over $19 million, and this number is based solely on reported adoptions, so we know that it is much higher. And here's something that I'd like to emphasize for anyone who might be adopting a resource or know somebody else who is adopting an OER, we would encourage you to report your adoptions to the Open Library uh, website. This helps us to update our statistics and also to raise awareness about the amazing work that is being done by educators throughout the province. We also have a great new tool that is available on the Open Library website under impact that you can embed in your own website that is a savings calculator that will help measure the impact that OER are having at your institution. Leo, just pop the links into the um, chat if you're interested in checking it out. Next slide, please. At the Open Library, we are aware through our work of the impact that OER have, but I wanted to de delve into two examples that further demonstrate how OER support learners and educators. So at the Open Library, uh, one of the resources with the most reported adoptions is the Fundamentals of Business, the Canadian edition. This resource was adapted by Canadian educators that eCampus Ontario hosted workshops and sprints to develop test banks and other ancillary resources to support this resource, and it has been adopted into a number of courses at different institutions. This OER has been downloaded more than uh, 695 times. Beyond this, the OER continues to be reviewed and has a cycle of updating and evaluation. I'm very excited to say, as Leo had mentioned earlier, it was translated into French, so it is now available as well uh, in French on the website. This one OER demonstrates the cycle of OERs in terms of creation, 
adaption, adoption, evaluation, and ongoing renewal. The second project that I wanted to highlight is Fanshawe College's OER Design Studio. This began in the spring of 2021 with financial support from eCampus Ontario's virtual learning strategy. The studio provides faculty with support with things such as research, copy editing, copyright, graphic design, multimedia creation, and more, all in the support of the development of OER for Fanshawe students. The studio fills a need which was identified by faculty and students. Students wanted to have access to OER, and faculty needed support finding and creating OER. Fanshawe reports that the design studio saves students $3 million in textbook costs. These two examples demonstrate the impact that OER can have both as an individual resource and also as an institutional initiative. Next slide, please. Yeah, shout out to Fanshawe. <laughs> I saw uh, somebody is joining us from there. Um, so um, the next thing that I wanted to focus on was the structure of the open library itself. The open library has three key areas of focus, resources, tools, and practices. The resources provided by the open library allow users to discover, add, and share OER, such as textbooks, courses, assignments, and much more using the open library catalog. We also supplied resources to report OER adoptions, create finding aids to help educators and learners use our resources, and we host events and professional development opportunities. In terms of the tools that we have available, these support the creation of OER. Pressbooks is an online publishing platform that allows users to create and host content such as textbooks. Um, if you are a member institution, you can get a free account with us. And eCampus Ontario also hosts an instance of H5P Studios, which is another online tool that allows users to create interactive activities, everything from quizzes and fill in the blanks to virtual 360 tours and augmented reality things. These assets that are created, they can be used individually so you can share them with learners or you can integrate them into other OERs such as a press book. The final area in which we provide support is our practices. We spearhead the Ontario Open Library Network, which is a community on Slack. We provide advocacy support, and we have developed OER cataloging standards to support accessing resources in our catalog. Next slide, please. The Open Library has a number of initiatives that are underway this year, and I am going to highlight three of them the Integrating OER Program, the OER Rangers, and the Special OER Project. Next slide, please. The first initiative is the Integrating OER Program. Adoption of open educational resources is one pillar of eCampus Ontario's Integrating OER Program, and there's a number of different ones. We encourage Ontario post-secondary education, edit, pardon me, educators to peer review and edit resources in the open library as a means of evaluating and updating resources. Eligible ed Ontario educators can participate in the program. You can be an OER adopter, where you use an, e uh, an OER from the open library for teaching purposes, as a peer reviewer, providing feedback as a subject matter expert, or as an OER editor, updating an OER based on feedback that was gathered by the Open Library team. The Integrating OER program encourages and incentivizes educators to report their adoptions of open educational resources from the Open Library. Um, this is one of the programs that you can participate in right now, and Leo just dropped the link if you know somebody that's interested or you're interested yourself. We have a goal to collect 200 adoption reports for the open educational resources in our library, and we offer adopters a stipend of $300 per open educational resource adopted, up to a maximum of five. Following the adoption, adopters must submit a report detailing the OER they adopted, the course in which it was used, and the cost or estimated cost of the resource it replaced. For educators and others who are interested in OERs, these three opportunities are great ways to learn more about the open library and the type of resources that are available. Next slide, please. 
Uh, this is the project that Leo is supporting, but I'm going to be talking about it. But a shout out to Leo because this project has been had an amazing response. And I'm really excited that some of the rangers uh, he mentioned are in the audience today. So the OER Rangers program aims to raise awareness of OER by capacity building and professional development. In preparation for this program, the Open Library worked with subject matter experts from Ontario colleges and universities to create a course covering the basics of OER, including licensing, accessibility, and publishing tools. This material just became available as a press book in the Open Library, so everybody now has access to it. I also want to mention that it was created bilingual by design, which means it was designed in both languages at the same time, English and French, and not simply translated. Leo has had an amazing response in terms of engagement with more than 200 educators applying to participate in the program. There are now 85 rangers at 47 Ontario institutions, including five of the six Indigenous institutes, which are member institutions with eCampus Ontario. Rangers at the moment are completing their training and they'll soon be delivering sessions that will help to raise awareness and train colleagues and in doing that, expand the capacity and knowledge of OERs at their respective institutions. Next slide, please. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and so the in, um, initiative that I am supporting, along with a colleague, Sarah, is the Specialized OER Project. This project was developed based upon an assessment of English language resources in the Open Library Catalog. The assessment looked for gaps, areas in which there was little or no content available. And the four areas that were prioritized for OER development as a result of this assessment were business, engineering, sciences, and trades. There was an application period for um, individuals of approximately one month, Individuals or teams could apply to create a resource in English or French in any of the identified areas and request a project budget. They were required to be affiliated with an Ontario university, college, or Indigenous institute. We had a great response to this, and 65 applications were received, of which we were able to fund 17. The approved applications represent colleges and universities in the areas of business, sciences, and trades. I'm also really excited to say that um, there was really a broad spectrum of levels for the resources that were submitted, everything from introductory and sort of first year material up to graduate level resources. As a result of this initiative, we anticipate that 15 new OER will be created in these areas, along with two ancillary resources. They will be made available through the eCampus Ontario Open Library Catalog in the spring of 2022. Oh, 2024. <laughs> Can't tell my participants that they have to have done it in the past. Next slide, please. Slide 19, how we're supporting you. Um, there are four key areas in which we can provide support, training, advocacy, community, and analytics. Um, in terms of training, we provide support for press books, H5P, and just more broadly in terms of open education and OER. For advocacy, we're able to provide materials and resources to help support OER advocacy. We have a platform and opportunities to build connections with other educators uh, and support community in that way. For analytics, we're keeping track of OER adoptions in Ontario and specific OER usage data. Next slide, please. So we wanted to share some information about how you could connect with us and others in the open education community to access these supports and services. If you have any questions about our work, you can feel free to send us an email uh, to our team at open at ecampusontario.ca. We would also welcome you to join the Ontario Open Library community on Slack, where you can engage with others, post questions, and stay connected with the eCampus Ontario library team. If you're interested in any upcoming training or information section sessions, please check out our events section on the Open Library site. 
We'd also welcome you to request a one-to-one -one session if you were interested in any of the particular programs that we talked about today, or if you just wanted more information generally about the open library and open educational resources. Finally, I just wanted to mention that we have a great uh, page for the open library where you can go and visit um, revisit other sessions that we've offered so there's content that's available on topics such as h5p press books licensing creative commons and a number of different topic areas um, 